Hi, welcome to Kauzarwise channel. This is the continuation video of dividend policy. In this video, we are going to see Modigliani Miller model, that is MM model. Now, let's get into the video. Here, we are going to see Modigliani Miller hypothesis, that is MM model, which comes under dividend policy. Okay. So, before we see the numerical problem on this concept, let us try to understand the basic concept of MM model. See, Modi Gilani Miller argued that value of a firm is determined by its earnings potentiality and investment pattern and not by dividend distribution. Okay. So, according to them, the dividend decision is irrelevant. Okay. And it does not affect the market value of equity shares. That is the basic concept of MM model. Okay, that is Modigliani Miller hypothesis. Now we are going to see one numerical problem for better understanding of this concept. First, let us see the formula to find out market price per share at the end of the period. That is P1. So this is the formula. Okay, so P1 is equal to P0 into 1 plus Ke minus D1. Okay, so we are going to find out the market price per share at the end of the period that is P1. Okay. So, P0 means the same market price per share at the beginning of the period that is current market price will be given in the problem. P0 will be given in the problem that is current market price in the beginning will be there and we are going to find out the market price per share at the end of the period that is our answer. Okay. The next one is 1 plus Ke. Ke stands for cost of equity capital okay this will also given in the problem and the next one is d1 so d1 stands for dividend per share at the end of the period okay so these are the components which comes under the formula okay in order to find out market price per share at the end of the period that is p1 okay now let us see the numerical problem for better understanding see the problem wisdom limited has 50,000 shares outstanding. The current market price of these shares is rupees 20 each. Okay. This one is P0 that is current market price of the share. And then the board of directors of the company has recommended rupees 3 per share as dividend. This one is D1 that is dividend. The rate of capitalization appropriate to the risk class to which the company belongs is 20 percentage. This one is cost of equity, KE. So, these are the informations are given in the problem. With this information, they are asking you to calculate three things. Number one, based on MM approach, calculate the market price of the share of the company when the recommended dividend is distributed and the second option is not declared. Okay. So, they are asking you to find out market price of a share when the dividend is distributed and the dividend is not declared. Okay. So, this is the first case. After finding this calculation, then we can go for second calculation and third calculation. Now, let us see the solution for the first point. See the solution for the first one. Computation of market price of the share and a MM approach. Okay. So, we are going to find out market price per share if dividends are distributed and the second one if dividends are not declared okay so these are the informations given in the problem p0 that is current market price per share that is market price per share in the beginning of the year how much 20 rupees and ke that is cost of equity capital 20 percentage d1 dividend per share rupees 3 okay so with this information we are going to find out the market price per share at the end of the period okay so what is the formula p1 is equal to p0 into 1 plus ke minus d1 now we are going to substitute these values in the formula to find out market value that is market price of the share at the end of the year see the calculation P0 is 20 rupees no. So, 20 into 1 plus Ke. Ke is 20 percentage 20 by 100. So, 0 0.20 minus D3 rupees. Okay. So, 20 into 1 plus 0 0.20. So, 1.20. Okay. And minus 3. 
20 into 1.20, you will be getting 24 minus 3. So, what is the answer? Rupees 21. So, this is the market price per share at the end of the year under MM approach if dividends are distributed. Okay. The same thing we are going to calculate if dividends are not declared. Okay. In this case, D1 is 0. So, instead of 3, we are going to take 0 because dividends are not declared. No. So, D1 is 0 and all other values are remain same. Now, substitute the formula. So, P1 is equal to P0 into 1 plus Ke minus D1. Okay. So, what is P0? 20 rupees into 1 plus K is 20 percentage. No. So, 0 0.20 minus D1 is 0. So, 0. Okay. Then, 20 into 1.20. So, 0 that is all. So, what is the answer? Rupees 24. So, this is the market price per share okay, at the end of the year if dividends are not declared. Okay, the first calculation is over. Look at the problem. Look at the problem. So, far we have done the calculation for the first point. Let us see the second one. How many new shares to be issued by the company at the end of the accounting year on the assumption that the net income for the year is 250000 this is only an assumption right so the assumption is the net income for the year is 250000 and the investment budget is 520000 okay so budgeted that is a proposed investment amount is 520000 okay so this is the current year net income and this is the investment budget and they are asking you to find out how many number of new shares to be issued okay in order to fulfill the required amount when here we have two options when the above dividends are distributed and the second one the dividends are not declared okay so according to the two different scenario they are asking you to find out the how many number of shares to be issued okay so before we see the calculation let us see the procedure how to calculate this one see the formula to find out number of new shares to be issued the formula is amount to be raised by issue of new shares divided by issue price per share that is a market price per share okay how to calculate amount to be raised by issue of new shares that is how much amount is required in order to issue new shares okay for that we need to do some calculations the calculations are investment proposal okay proposed investment so how much amount is required 5 lakh 20 thousand okay in that if there is any retained earnings that is retained earnings available for investment that will be subtracted from the proposed investment okay so how to calculate retained earnings available that can be calculated separately that is uh, out of net income if the company desire to distribute dividend that has to be subtracted and the remaining amount is called retained earnings okay so that retained earnings we can utilize for the investment amount okay so that we can subtract from this amount the remaining amount the residual amount is called amount is to be raised by issue of new shares okay so this is the amount we can take from the retained earnings the rest of the amount we need to issue new shares okay and how many number of shares to be issued this is the amount is required divided by issue price per share that is market price per share okay this is the formula to find out number of new shares to be issued now let us see the calculation part look at the second calculation Computation of number of shares to be issued to finance the investment proposal. Okay. So, if dividends are distributed and second one if dividends are not declared. So, according to two different conditions we are going to find out how many number of shares to be issued for the proposed investment. Okay. So, for that first we need to calculate how much amount is required. Okay. For that you have to substitute the format to find out the how much amount is required. For that first you have to take investment proposal okay how much is required look at the problem see the problem how much is investment budget 5 lakh 20 thousand okay and the current year net income is 2 lakh 50 thousand okay if the company desire to declare dividend means see the above information so how many number of shares are there existing shares 
50,000 shares. Okay. So, the dividend amount is 3 rupees per share. This is the current dividend amount. So, 3 rupees. No. So, 50,000 into 3. 1,50,000 is the total dividend. So, if the company desire to declare dividend, the company has to pay 1,50,000. That is 50,000 into 3 is equal to 1,50,000. That amount will be given from the current year profit. Okay. And the second one is dividend are not declared. So, according to the two condition, we are going to find out how many number of shares to be issued for the proposed investment. See the solution. See the solution for the first one that is if dividends are distributed. Okay. So, investment proposed how much is required? 5,20,000 no. That is the investment proposed. In that we have to subtract if there is any retained earnings available for investment. For that you have to do some calculation. So, current year net income is 2,50,000 no. So, take 2,50,000. And then subtract dividend distributed. So, if dividends are distributed, in that case, we need to subtract dividend amount from the current year net profit. So, how much dividend? Existing shares is 50,000. No, 50,000 into dividend per share is 3 rupees, which is given in the problem. 50,000 into 3, 150,000. Okay. So, the remaining amount is out of net profit. 1,50,000 declared as dividend. The remaining amount 1 lakh is called retained earnings which is available for investment. So, that amount you can subtract from the investment proposed. So, total amount proposed is 5,20,000 and we are adjusting 1 lakh that is retained earnings after declaring the dividend. This is the current year profit which is available and then 5,20,000 minus 1 lakh, the remaining 4,20,000 is required. Okay. So, this is the fund is to be raised by issue of new shares. This is the fund is to be raised by issue of new shares. Okay. So, now what is the market price per share if dividends are distributed? See the previous calculation. Refer the first calculation. If dividends are distributed, market price of the share is how much? 21 rupees. See the second calculation. Market price per share that is if dividends are distributed, this is the market price per share that is rupees 21. Okay. Now, substitute the formula to find out number of new shares to be issued. What is the formula? Funds to be raised by issue of shares. How much? 4,20,000. So, 4,20,000 divided by market price per share that is issue price 21 rupees. If the dividends are distributed, this is the market price per share. So, 21 rupees. What is the answer? 20,000 shares. So, this is the number of new shares to be issued in order to invest further that is investment proposed amount is 520 no in that we are utilizing 1 lakh retained earnings this is the amount is required and we are going to issue 20,000 new shares in order to raise 4,20,000 okay now let us see the calculation for second case that is if dividends are not declared same thing how much investment proposal 5,20,000 no 5,20,000 less retained earnings available for investment. Minus dividend distribution. Okay. For the second one is if dividends are not declared. So, put dash. So, there is no distribution of dividend. So, the entire 2,50,000 you can utilize for the investment proposed. So, subtract this 2,50,000. Then you will be getting how much fund to be raised by issue of new shares. So, 5,20,000 minus 2,50,000. Balance 2,70,000. So, this is the fund is required to issue new shares. Okay. Now, Market price per share. Market price per share if dividend are not declared. See the previous calculation. See the first calculation. Rupees 24. 
this is the market price per share if dividends are not declared okay we have to consider this value okay see the second calculation market price per share is how much rupees 24 that is if dividends are not declared then the market price per share is 24 rupees now substitute the formula to find out number of new shares to be issued so how much fund is required after adjusting the retained earnings 270000 is required now 270 divided by market price per share is 24 rupees okay so the answer is 11250 shares this is the number of new shares to be issued in order to raise 270000 okay see the problem so far we have done two calculations the first one is a calculation of market price per share okay and the second one is a number of new shares to be issued and the third one is a show that market value of shares at the end of the accounting year will remain the same whether dividends are distributed or not declared okay so here according to mm approach whether the dividend is distributed or not distributed market value of shares not per share the total value of the firm that is market value of shares is going to be remain same whether the company decide to declare dividend or not to declare dividend whatever may be the decision the market value of shares is going to be remain same that is the concept of mm approach now we are going to see the calculation for this one see the third calculation computation of market value of shares okay this one is a market value of total shares okay if dividends are distributed and second case if dividends are not declared okay for that so there is a formula to find out market value of total shares the formula is total number of shares of the company into market price per share okay see here the existing shares of the company is 50,000 this is given in the problem right so existing shares 50,000 and new shares refer the previous calculation number 2 that is a number of shares to be issued by the company if the dividends are distributed how many number of shares 20,000 no so 50 plus 20 total 70 okay and market price per share if the company desire to declare dividend what is the market price you can refer calculation 1 that is 21 rupees now substitute these two values in the formula to find out market values of shares total number of shares existing 50 new shares 20 total 70,000 no so 70,000 number of shares into market price per share 21 rupees so total market value of total company shares is rupees 14,70,000 in the same way we are going to calculate market value of shares if the company decide to not declare dividend the same formula okay that is a uh, uh, total number of shares existing shares 50,000 and new shares so number of shares to be issued by the company if dividends are not declared how much 11,250 you can refer the previous calculation second calculation 11,250 total 61,250 total number of shares now market price per share 24 rupees okay for this you can refer calculation 1 okay if dividends are not declared market price per share is 24 rupees now substitute the formula okay see total number of shares 61,250 into market price per share 24 rupees the answer is rupees 14,70,000 okay see according to mm approach whether the company decide to declare dividend and not declare dividend the market price the market value of shares is going to remain same so they have proved that the market value of shares or remain same irrespective of dividend distribution okay so hope you like the video please hit the like comment subscribe and share with your friends thank you